Tonight I want to talk about why it's so easy for uh, some men to run game on some women. You cannot be a silly woman in a sick world. You cannot be a silly woman in a sick world. Now some of you all are going to get offended by this and I really don't care because somebody got to tell you, you are your own worst enemy. You cannot be a silly woman in a sick world. This is a world that will eat a silly woman alive. And if you do not possess wisdom, and if you're not in pursuit of wisdom, um, this world will expose you. And there are too many women who have not been educated. Let me deal with this real quickly because I just got off the phone with one of my little nieces and she may be on here tonight. <clears throat> of course, I wouldn't call her name. Not a biological niece, a, a spiritual niece. And, um, you know, game. We had a conversation and she running it down to me and I'm just, just, just screaming out on the phone. Game. Game, game, game. Have you read my book? Have you read my book? Game. And there are too many women, man, that are being abused out here because your, your, head is, your head is screwed off. You've disconnected your brain from your life. In, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 6 and 7, the apostle Paul says something very powerful. He says to Timothy, for of this sort are they which creep into houses, talking about certain kinds of men, creep into houses and lead captive silly women. The Bible calls them silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers or many kinds of lust, always learning, always on periscope, always reading the books but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. No application. Now, Paul calls these women silly, and he talks about how <clears throat> these certain kinds of men creep into their houses and lead them astray. Let me deal with this in about 10 minutes. As for those of you who have a, a short attention span, I need you to hear this tonight. I need you to hear this tonight. This is going to help somebody. The first thing I see relative to the marks of a silly woman is that <clears throat> she entertains, watch this, she entertains men that creep. The Bible says, for this sort of they which creep into houses and lead captive, they are creeping into her house and she entertains them. Why do women entertain men that creep? Men that are unstable, men that are not committed, men that are all over the place clearly, men who live their lives loosely, why does she entertain them? The question is often asked, why do men sleep around so much? Because so many women let them. She entertains men that creep. This speaks of a lack of judgment. Now y'all got to hear what I'm saying right now. This this conversation, this little this little thing we got going on right now is going to save some of y'all's lives if you hear what I say to you tonight. This is the kind of stuff. This is what the father daughter talk is all about. It's the stuff your daddy should have taught you before he released you into the world. This speaks of when you, they creep into houses and lead women, silly women astray. She entertains men that creep. It speaks of a lack of judgment or a lack of discernment. 
Why does she have such poor judgment? Why does, why does this woman have such poor judgment that she allows a man that creeps into her space? She's driven by, now you have to hear this because this is powerful right here and it's truth. And I get in trouble a lot of times with brothers, with men, leaders, because of this statement I'm getting ready to make. She's driven by a misogynistic pressure that says or conditions the woman to believe that she is only as valuable as the man on her arm. She feels like, in other words, she has to have a man to have value. And the world has taught you that intentionally. The world has psychologically incarcerated you to no appreciation of yourself apart from a man. And as a consequence, a woman would rather have a piece of a man than to be a whole woman without any kind of man. And some of y'all on here tonight, you cannot fathom living as an individual. The thing you are most afraid of is living as an individual. You have been out of one relationship, in and out of one relationship after another because you cannot imagine being without a man because for you, you don't even realize that you have been conditioned to think that if I don't have a man, I am worth nothing. So you'd rather have just the image of a man. It's like parking a car in your driveway that doesn't even have an engine. You just want your neighbors to think you have one and you're out there waxing it and washing it every weekend. It can't even move. Now, this woman that entertains men that creep is a woman that is totally sensual and emotional. I don't care nothing about her going to church and holding positions in, in, in the church and, and knowing the Bible. This woman is totally sensual and emotional. She's not spiritual. She's not discerning. And she's not intellectual. Not at this point. She may be highly educated. She may have a PhD, but at this point, she is not spiritual. She's not discerning spiritually, and she's not even using her brains to even allow this man to have an audience with her. Look what the Bible says in Proverbs 27 and 12. A prudent person sees trouble coming and ducks a simpleton walks in blindly and is clobbered. I don't think they like what I'm talking about. I see my numbers dropping off. <laughs> oh, somebody got to tell the truth though, man. I'm tired of y'all calling me with this foolishness. You know, these, 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 uh, and not, not, don't get me wrong. It's not all brothers. It's not all brothers. You have some good men out there, but some of y'all just so addicted to trash. You can't appreciate treasure. And you calling me with this foolishness? Clearly, game, you're too intelligent for this. You're too spirit-filled for this. The Bible says, and this is the Message Bible, a prudent person sees trouble coming and ducks, but a simpleton walks in blindly and is clobbered. Proverbs 14, 15, and 16, the gullible believe anything they're told. The prudent sift and weigh every word. The wise watch their steps and avoid evil. Fools are headstrong and reckless. So the first thing we see about the silly woman is that she entertains men that creeps. The second thing, now watch this, it goes deeper. The plot thickens. Watch this. The second thing we see is that she lets him creep into her house because the Bible says, for this sort of day which creep into houses, and clearly it's not his house because he wouldn't have to creep in his own house. So he probably doesn't have a house of his own. So he's creeping into her house. He's creeping into her house. So number two, 
Silly women let men creep into their space. And this speaks of what? Her lack of boundaries. She allows this unproven man into her personal and intimate space. Now this relates to women who, who go too far with men financially. You'd be amazed at how many women that are on this scope tonight and some that have dropped off because they couldn't handle what I was saying that have overextended themselves to men financially. You don't even know this man. And you, you, you out here, you know, load your credit cards up. It speaks of, it speaks of a woman that um, allows a man in her life sexually. You're allowing him into your personal space, your intimate space. And then watch this. And then it's even worse when you're a woman who's a mother of children. And you bring in men into your intimate space where your children reside. Not only are you foolish relative to yourself, but now you are risking the well-being of your children with a man you don't even know. You're so desperate for a man, you are jeopardizing your children. You want a man so bad, you're about to lose your kids. You're a mother. You ain't got time to have no man creeping in and out of your house with your children. You're, you're a dignified woman of God. What in the world are you doing? Got all these men in and out of your life, bringing them all into your personal space. You don't even know this man. You just got him creeping in and out of your life. Come in for, uh, you know, just a booty call. And then you don't see him no more for three or four weeks. And then he call you with that same old jive talk. And there you are falling for it again. And this is a cycle that goes on for years. Until you turn on Periscope and there's a black dude with a camouflage jacket on and a beard looking crazy in the camera telling you. Some of y'all need to send this to some of these girlfriends of y'all's because this is some foolish stuff in a day and age where all of this knowledge is being dropped to see intelligent spiritual women being made fools of unnecessarily. Look what the Bible says. And Paul says, and this is the message Bible version again in Philippians 1, 9 and 10. He says, so this is my prayer. Now listen to this very carefully. This is the Message Bible version, Philippians 1, 9 and 10. For this is my prayer, that your love will flourish and that you will not only love much, but love well. Learn to love appropriately. Learn to love appropriately. You need to use your head and test your feelings so that your love is sincere and intelligent, not sentimental gush. Live a lover's life, circumspect and exemplary, a life Jesus will be proud of. Paul says, I ain't got no problem with y'all loving, but love with some intelligence and discernment. You don't let people into your space. These boys creeping into your house. Number three, number three, y'all still with me? Not only does she entertain men that creep, but she's, number two, she allows these creeps to come into her space, her house. But then the Bible says, the Bible goes further. The Bible says, let me read it. Uh, in 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 7, it says, for this sort of day which creep into houses and lead captive silly women not only do they entertain creeps not only do they let the creeps creep into their personal spaces but watch this they actually allow the creeps to lead them into bondage i don't know i don't know how, how i don't know how how low you have to go i don't know how low a man 
or, or, or a, a, a supposed to be man has to, I don't know how low he has to bring you in your life before you wake up and realize that maybe this is not a person that should be in my life and maybe this is not a person that I should be intimate with. How, 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 how severely does a man have to damage your life? How much does he have to rob you of? How much does he have to cost you before you wake up and say, you know, maybe I shouldn't sleep with this man anymore. He, he's given me three or four STDs. My credit is ruined. I've lost my reputation. Maybe I should move on from this guy. But instead, you let him lead you captive. You let him lead you into bondage. This speaks of a lack. Well, I'm not going to say that. I'll, I'll put it this way. I was going to say something that would have been harsh. I'm not going to do that. A leader, a woman that would follow a man. You know, in the church, we talk a lot about woman submitting to man. And I believe that. But you know what I also believe? A man has to be a proven leader. And you know what I also believe? No man should force or coerce a woman to submit. You know what else I believe? When a woman finds the right man, that's the right leader, submission will come automatic. It won't be because a pastor beat her over the head with the Bible last Sunday. When she finds the right man, she will submit naturally. But isn't it amazing how a woman can spend her life following clowns? And those clowns will leave such a wound in her life that when a king finally shows up, she's so bitter and she's so calloused that she won't follow the king. A leader should be vetted based on knowledge and character. You don't follow, you don't let a man come into your life and lead you until he's been vetted. Everybody should know what vetted means now. Donald Trump has worn that word out. Proven, tested, tried. Every man should be vetted that you will allow to hold any significant relationship in your life. <clears throat> and if he's not proven, by watch this, his knowledge and his character, you'll be amazed, and I say it all the time, it's amazing how a PhD of a woman is led by a GED of a man. And that's just for emphasis because educational accomplishments has, doesn't speak of intelligence. There are a lot of men who didn't graduate from high school who are brilliant. But I'm just using that for emphasis. How a PhD of a woman will be manipulated by a GED of a man. You will allow a man that has gone nowhere to lead you. You're going to allow a man that has gone nowhere to lead you and your children. You are, I hate to say it, I love you and I'm saying it in love. You are a silly woman. I know you're gonna probably unfollow me, but I gotta tell you one more time, come in real close. You are a silly woman. You're following a man that has gone nowhere. Just because you have a need to have a man on your side. He may actually be a little boy with a beard. You have a need for a man. You're so out of control sexually. Your passions have overridden your intelligence and shut off your spiritual discernment. And you're letting a fool lead you. See, you don't want you don't want my you don't want my advice 
You don't want my advice when you entertain this fool when he first starts coming around and he's creeping in and out of your house and you, the, the men in your life that can tell you what you're working with, you want to hide it from them. But when that fool leads you into captivity and bondage and your life is broken and this fool walks away, now you want to involve, you want to involve me now. You want to involve me now. You want to get everybody involved now. And some of y'all on there, I, I, don't, I don't mean to make it easy. I don't mean to make I hope some of y'all get mad. I don't care what you're writing on here. You, you're a silly woman because you're too intelligent for this. You know too much for this. And you, you, you're spirit-filled, meaning you have just ignored the Holy Spirit. You have shut off all of your brain. And you're just being driven now by pure passion. Lust. And the Bible says, and I'm out of here before I get in trouble. I got to get out of here because I can feel, I can feel the heat coming off of this, this device right now. I got to get out of here. The Bible says in first Peter three and seven, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. The silly woman allows the fool to lead her into bondage. But first Peter says, first Peter three and seven says, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. First thing you want to know about a man is what do you know? Why would you submit yourself to following, submitting to an ignoramus, a dummy? An airhead, strong back, weak mind, a man that can make a bunch of babies but can't raise no children. He know how to have sex, but he's never made love because love is made between the ears, not the sheets. He's a dummy, just a big brawn of a... <laughs> Dwell with them according to knowledge. Then he says... Giving honor unto the wife. Not only is he a knowledgeable man, the man that would qualify to lead you. Not only is he a knowledgeable man, but he's a man that respects and discerns your value. Because to honor something is to put it on a shelf above, to esteem it. He's wise enough to know your value. You ain't got to beg him to see and understand who you are. That's why you can submit to him. Because he first honors you. He ain't honoring you coming in and out your house having sex with you while your children down the hall sleeping. You got some strange man coming in your house having sex, just, just a booty call. And here you are an intelligent, spirit-filled woman. And you, you settling for that? And he running out your house. Have you ever noticed three minutes after y'all through, he finding a reason to go? All he came for was sex. He don't want nothing else from you. He creeping. He knows nothing. Because if he knew something, he'd find him a wife and understand he would, he would obtain a good thing and have favor on his life. And if he knew something, he would honor you. He would do you better than he's doing you. But because you allow it, it continues. I can't believe all these men dogs out here. Well, they couldn't be dogs. Y'all finish that. You finish that. Yeah. I, all these men out here dogs, but they, they, they wouldn't be dogs. They couldn't be dogs, even if they are dogs. Thank you, Pastor D. Maybe you're a dog catcher. Watch this. Giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together. The grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. So, my prayer for you tonight is that every shackle, every psychological lock be broken off of your life. All of these soul ties that have you confused and bound to relationships that are doing nothing but draining you and pulling you down and under. My prayer tonight is that the Spirit of God will break every one of them, break every chain, and that you tonight will... will 
take a real serious look at your life and everything that did not come from God, you must send it out of your life. Every person that is not ordained of God, they got to go. You are better than this. You are bigger than this. You are smarter than this. You are wiser than this. Sometimes life begins when certain people walk out. If they won't walk out, sometimes you got to put them out. But it's time for you now to raise the bar. It's time for you now to raise the bar. I came on here tonight to say that to you because I, 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 I wrestled with should I talk about it? It's necessary. I've been avoiding these conversations lately. Because I don't want to make the brothers feel like, well, you know, I'm trying to make life hard for, for, for brothers. I'm trying to paint good brothers in a bad light. But they're, they're just, it's, just, it's just too much. So I love y'all. I, I love y'all. I really do. I love you. That's, I love you. And, and I'm talking out of, out of the sincerity of my heart. It's time for some of you all to shift. And I'm not talking about like next year with next year is just weeks away. I'm talking about tonight. You are not a silly woman, so stop behaving as such. Because women set such a low bar. You know, when I was, when I was younger, somebody say many, many years ago, and I was, I was running women like that, I did it because they allowed me to. The game has not changed. The players have changed. The game is still the same. When a woman walks in wisdom, there's a presence about a wise woman that a player won't even approach. But see, when you're desperate and you don't know your value and you don't know your worth and you just will settle for anything, don't nobody care nothing about all them fancy clothes you wear and all those big words you learn down at the university. Players can read through all of that and they can sniff your insecurities out. You got to do some self-work. A lot of y'all don't need to be dating anybody right now. You don't, you don't even know yourself. You need to do some self-work so that your spirit man and your soul emanates who you really are. Because you're trying to project the image of a strong, powerful woman. But on the inside, you're still a little weak woman that will settle for anything and believe anything any man will tell you. And they'll play you all day long like a piano. You need to do some self-work. You need to get around some strong, some really strong women. Get all these little weak girls from around you running in packs of little weak women. Get some strong women around you that can build you up and help you to see who you are and what you can really accomplish. Get your vision in front of you. Strengthen your relationship with God and let God send you a king. Stop worrying about trying to go make a man, find a man, run a man down. Man, lady, sister, daughter, girl, whatever you want to be called. Get yourself together. God has more for you than this. Your life consists of more than this. I love y'all. Good night. I think no one let me out of here.